Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Financial Madness. My name is Kozan and I'm here to help you be better with your money. Credit cards. Some people like them, some people are scared of them, some people even have five of them. But what the hell are they? In this video, I'm gonna give you everything that you need to know about credit cards. I've split this video into sections, so we're gonna be looking at what a credit card actually is, the benefits of having a credit card, the different types of credit cards that are available on the market, how to be eligible for one, and the do's and don'ts of getting a credit card. So, let's get on with the show. So what is a credit card? A credit card is essentially a piece of plastic that allows you to borrow money from a bank or another lender. Unlike a debit card, which you probably have, this is where you open up an account with a bank, you put your own money in there, and you use your debit card to access that money. A credit card is slightly different. You use the credit card to access money that is the bank's, and you promise to pay back the bank at a later date. Now let's look at some of the benefits when it comes to getting a credit card. One of the benefits is that you have free protection for any purchases from £100 to £30,000. This means if something were to go wrong, it is the credit card company that is responsible for reimbursing you your cash. Things that can go wrong can be situations like a company going bust, you purchased something online that never showed up, or you've been sold something that has been misrepresented. It's important to note that the protection still counts even if you use the credit card to only pay a proportion of the purchase. For example, say I bought a sofa and I paid a down deposit of 75 pounds. And then I paid the rest of the sofa in cash, which worked out to be 300 pounds. So if something went wrong with my purchase, say my sofa never turned up, it is the credit card company's duty to pay me back that 375 pounds that I lost, even though I used only 75 pounds of it with the credit card company itself. The only criteria is that the purchase itself has to be at least 100 pounds and less than 30,000 pounds for you to be eligible. The second benefit is that you get to buy now and pay later. Credit cards can be really flexible in allowing you to purchase items that you don't currently have the funds for, but you will do at the next payday. I say the next payday for a reason, as you should only be borrowing what you can pay back later. We'll go into this in a bit more detail later. Number three, there is usually at least one month of interest-free borrowing. When you're given a credit card, you're given a statement at the end of every month where you have the option to pay off some of the money. What you should be doing is paying off the credit card in full at the end of the month. That means you don't get charged any interest on the purchases that you've used with that credit card. Another side note is that there are some specialized credit cards out there that offer you an extended 0% interest-free period longer than one month. Benefit number four is that you can find credit cards that offer you some freebies. Freebies can range from free air miles every time you spend money, some reward points, and even some cashback. Just a quick note on what cashback is, in case you're not aware. Cashback is essentially when the credit card company pay you back a percentage of what you've spent on your credit card. So it's essentially free money. There are some restrictions on what is eligible for cashback, so do check the T's and C's for each credit card company that offer this type of reward scheme. The fifth benefit of getting a credit card is that it can improve your credit score, especially if you have low or very limited credit history. Just so you are aware, every adult in the UK is given a credit score. Now this score is a quick way for lenders to identify how good or how bad you are at returning money that is borrowed. Obviously, the higher your credit score, the better, so this can be achieved by paying back your credit card statements in full every month. Now this is quite important because this has some major implications on huge purchases that you do in the future. The most common case for most of us would be getting a mortgage when buying our property. The banks will look at your credit score when deciding whether or not to approve your mortgage. Credit scores can also be impacted with other types of financing, say if you wanted to get a car or some other big purchase as well. If you want to find out your own credit score, it's completely free and really simple to do. I'll put a link in the description to a company called Experian. You just have to fill in a few personal details and it will literally throw back your credit score as soon as you're done. Um, you can pay for a more premium service if you want to understand the certain drivers behind the numbers, um, but usually the free service is, is more than enough for most people. So those are the main benefits of getting a credit card. 
Obviously, I do need to mention uh, a big word of caution, and this is probably the major disadvantage of getting a credit card. Once you are approved for a credit card, you will then have access to a significant amount of money from the bank. So you may be encouraged to spend more than you normally would, and if you spend above your actual means, you risk not being able to pay back the bank at the end of the month. And if you do that, you will be charged interest on any amount that you've been borrowing. Now, you really want to limit as much as possible any money that spills over that one month period because the interest rate charge or what is typically known as the APR which is the annual percentage rate is quite extortionate. In the UK the average interest rate charge on a credit card loan is around about the 20% mark which is a lot of money so please do take this as a word of caution. Credit cards are really beneficial for us but if you use them in the wrong way they can be really costly as well and it can have major negative implications on your future. Now moving on to the next section where we look at the different types of credit cards that are available. So finding the best credit card for you does require some thinking. So I'm gonna go through the main credit card types in this next section and hopefully from that you can get a gauge of what type of credit card would work for you and what type of credit card won't work for you. So the first type of credit card is something called the rewards card. This is when the lender rewards you for spending money using their card. Rewards can range from air miles to shopping points to cash back. Good reward cards typically come with an annual fee, but you can find some reward cards that are absolutely free. So a pro on the rewards card is that if you are really confident that you are able to pay back your monthly statement at the end of every month, then you're essentially getting free rewards. A con for this is that for the really good reward cards, there is an annual cost associated with getting that credit card. So you do need to work out whether the benefits that you're getting outweigh the cost of getting the credit card. So the second type of credit card is something called the credit building card. Now this is really good for individuals with really poor credit history. Pros for this is that even if you have a poor credit score, your application is likely still to be approved with this credit card. And once you get this credit card, if you're able to pay off your monthly statement in full at the end of the month, you'll be able to start then rebuilding your credit score and regaining the confidence from the lender that you are responsible when it comes to borrowing money. A con for this is that the interest rate charged on these cards are typically the highest compared to all the other credit cards. So do make sure you pay off your credit card in full. I'm gonna say this over and over again. You need to be paying off your credit card in full at the end of the month. The third type of credit card is something called the balance transfer card. This is where you already have a credit card with a loan on it, but you want to transfer it to a balance transfer card. Now, the reason why you would do this is because balance transfer cards typically offer zero to really low interest rates. So that's the positive, but you do tend to have to have a really good credit score to be applicable for these types of cards. A con for this type of card is that you will be charged a transferring fee when moving your loan from a one credit card to a balance transfer card. So you do need to make some calculations by figuring out whether the savings that you're getting from moving to a lower interest rate or zero interest rate card outweighs the cost of the transferring fee that you will be subjected to. The fourth type of card is something called a purchase card. Now, as the name suggests, these are really good for big purchase items. These credit cards allow you to have repayment costs over the span of several months and it's typically a cheaper form of borrowing. The pros for this one is that it usually has a really long interest-free period, but to be eligible for this, the lenders will require you to commit to a minimum repayment plan, so you do need to keep up with those minimum repayments to be eligible for the 0% interest-free period. The con for this is that you really need to be trying to pay off that loan during your interest-free period. If you do have any loan outstanding after that period, the interest rate that you'll be charged will jump significantly. So those are the four main types of credit cards that you should know. There are a couple more credit card types out there, but I've chosen not to put them in because a lot of them tend to have personality traits of one or two of the credit cards that I've already mentioned before. If you want to find out more about those, I do encourage you to do your own research on those, but I think for these four, they cover the most common ones, so uh, we'll, we'll lead with that. So that moves on to the next point. How on earth do we find the best credit card for us? So one of the best ways is to simply just use a comparison website. I'll put a link in the description for a couple of credit card comparison websites so you have a starting point. But essentially these comparison websites compare credit cards against one another. Usually they are comparing them within those categories that I mentioned before. It gives you loads of information about all the different variables you need to consider when getting a credit card. 
However, one drawback that I should mention when using these comparison websites, from my experience, they don't actually have a full list of all the credit cards for you to compare against. So you will be missing on some credit cards that potentially might be good for you, but won't appear on this comparison website because I guess the comparison website doesn't have a deal with this company. So what I tend to do is look at one of my favorite websites, moneysavingexpert.com. There is a blog page for each type of credit card that I just described earlier, and they handpicked the top selections for each of those credit cards. The blogs are updated frequently, so I trust that they are getting the best deals at that point in time. And I'll put a link to all of those blogs in the description link down below for each of the credit card types we went through. So do check that out. Now the next section is to understand how to be eligible for a credit card. Now what usually used to be the case where if you wanted to find out whether you could get a credit card or not is just simply apply for it and wait for the bank or lender to say yes or no. But now you can find these really great online eligibility calculator tools that assess your personal details and depending on which credit card you're applying for, they will respond with a percentage of how likely or how unlikely you're going to be accepted for this credit card. So the factors that they consider to figure out this eligibility is things like your employment status, your annual salary before tax, how much money you're paying towards your mortgage or rent, whether you have multiple income streams, or if you have any individuals that are financially dependent on you. I'll put a link in the description for one or two eligibility tools down below, so do check that out. Now we're at the final section, we're gonna be looking at the do's and don'ts when getting a credit card. This is kind of a summary of what we've discussed in the past, plus some additional tips as well. So let's look at the do's first. Number one, as you probably guessed it, is to be sure you pay your monthly credit card statement in full at the end of each month. Of course, if you have a credit card that allows for a longer period of interest-free borrowing, please do take advantage of that, but make sure at the end of that period, you pay off the uh, loan in full as well. We don't want to be paying the credit card companies any interest because remember, they are ridiculously expensive. A do number two is that you should set up a direct debit from your credit card to your current account. Because let's face it, we're all human. We're gonna tend to forget to pay off our credit card from time to time if we just kept it to ourselves and our memory. So why not set up a direct debit that does that for you? You have three options on how much you can pay. So the first one is obviously paying the full amount, which I encourage you, I don't know if you've gathered that so far in this video, or you can pay off the minimum repayments or you can choose a payment of your own choosing which is at least higher than the minimum repayment requirement. Do number three is to reap the rewards from your credit card. Usually once you get a new credit card there is sort of a grace period or an introductory period where the benefits of the rewards are far greater than when you become an existing customer. So make sure you reap those rewards as much as possible. Obviously stay within your spending limit means. I don't want to encourage you to spend more than what you can afford. Do number five is spend some time thinking about what type of credit card is right for you. Remember you can actually have multiple ones if you want to get one for different scenarios. For me personally, I don't need a credit card for a large loan. So I usually stick to cards that give me great reward schemes. At this point in time, I have a Nectar Amex card or American Express card that where they reward me with points every time I spend money. Now I've had this card for about five months. Me and my, both me and my partner use this card. And now we've got about 300 pounds in points that we've managed to earn that we can actually spend at Sainsbury's for our weekly shot, which is great. It's 300 pounds we never had before. So, but yeah, do spend some time thinking about what credit card is right for your personal preferences. So now we move on to the don'ts. Now, the first don't is that you should never, ever withdraw your cash using a credit card. In most cases, when you withdraw cash, the credit card company will start charging that cash interest as soon as it's been withdrawn from that cash point. You don't get that same one month grace period of 0% interest if you chose to use your card in store by uh, purchasing something on the card machine. The second don't is that you should never spend above your means, only borrow what you can pay back later. I just want to show you a quick diagram provided by Money Advice Services on how expensive it can be by just taking out £1,000 on your credit card. So in this example it reads that you have a £1,000 outstanding balance on your credit card, um, you are being charged an 18% interest rate, 
or APR rate and that you're no longer using the card. So that £1,000 is going to stay the same. We're not spending any more money than we, than we will at this point in time. So it's given us two examples, one where we pay £30 a month in repayments and the other £100. As you can see, with the £30 repayment plan, the total interest that will be charged is £353. That's almost half of the original loan that we took out. So that means that £1,000 has now meant that we have to now pay back £1,353 to the bank. And this has taken us three years and 10 months. So if we compare this to the next example where we pay £100 at the end of every month, we only pay 85% in interest when we repay back this loan, so considerably less. So that means that £1,000 has turned into £1,085 and it's taken us 11 months to repay back this credit loan. The point that I'm trying to make is that even if you do find yourself in a situation where you are unable to pay back the monthly statement at the end of the month, put as much effort as you can to ensure that that debt is paid off as soon as possible. Because look at the difference here between just paying £30 a month to £100 a month. The third and final don't is that you should never miss a payment. At most, you need to keep up with the minimum repayment plans. You will still be charged interest, but if you miss a payment, you'll actually be charged an additional penalty fee, which is just nasty. So just try your best not to do that. One side note that I also want to mention is that due to the coronavirus pandemic, a majority of lenders have introduced something called a credit repayment holiday. So obviously they've noticed that we are experiencing some challenging and unusual times. So they've given some flexibility to certain credit card holders when it comes to repaying back their credit. From what I understand, the flexibility does vary between lenders. So be sure to check out your lender's website for further information. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. I hope that was really useful. Let me know in the comments section down below if you've got any more questions or any more guidance that you would like to hear from me. Happy to engage with you guys. And as always, if you really like the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. I do a video every single Monday. So if you want to keep up to date with those two, hit the subscribe button. See you later.